Take a Ben. I know this is a different example, weird example to give you. You and Andrew Tate are actually very similar. Okay. The only <laughs> difference is he doesn't like that. You know. Welcome back to the Wilson Brothers channel. My name is Isaac. This is David and the Viking Jordan. We're so happy to be with you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like our content and you want to follow us for more. We will have some below at the end. Today, we are reacting to Ben Shapiro interviewing Patrick Beck David, and we are selecting a specific clip that our ghost producer sent us <laughs> surrounding some background information on the interview with Andrew Tate. Yeah, it's actually Patrick Beck David's opinion of okay. Andrew Tate. So this is going to be fascinating because normally Patrick Bet David is the interviewer. Yeah. Today, he's the interviewee. And he's, just, he's a very interesting guy. He's very good at, at breaking down the different ideas that people have without seeming like he's one-sided specifically with him i've i see how he tells stories and how he interviews and it's actually really really on point i'll uh, be really curious to see ben shapiro on andrew because like i tr i like i respect ben's opinions on politics but like he's always struck me as being someone who's been on low t since he was like a teenager <laughs> low, so you gotta Low what? testosterone. Okay. We're strong people. That's come from the testosterone. There you go. Dude, okay. dude needs a, a hefty amount of testosterone in his life. Can you imagine <laughs> if he was jacked? Jack, I'm flying. He, I don't think he could get jacked even if he wanted to. Even if he took testosterone? If he took testosterone, yeah. <laughs> ah. All right, let's see how this goes. I have no idea what this is going to be. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, Andrew Tate is the kind of guy that... Um, the mainstream media loves to hate. It's a great target for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an easy target for them. And he knows how to troll them, how to get under their skin. Yeah. And uh, anytime you get a guy like that, he's going to get a lot of eyeballs. So when when you interview somebody like Andrew, what kind of prep goes into that? Because obviously we've had people at Daily Wire who've interviewed him as well. And, and the big controversies that surround him, there's sort of two sets. There's one that's about his views, which are interesting and certainly heterodox. Yeah. What I've said about his views from his public expression of them is that I agree with many of his diagnoses and very few of his prescriptions. So many of his diagnoses of secular feminism and third wave feminism and, and the destruction of society, mm -hmm. I think a lot of those are true. And then mm -hmm. I think sort of the way that he, he treats the, the questions, the answers are, are very often wrong. Meaning that my answer to that would be get married, have kids, build a, build a family unit. That's how you build a society. It's not through sort of you know, how many women can I attract or how much money can I make? And that, that shouldn't be your gauge of success, in other words. So there, there are the, the controversy about his views, which people can argue over. And then there's obviously the, the, the bigger controversy over his actual activities. Uh, what do you make of, of some of the compilation videos that have come out of him talking about, for example, his, his you know, lover boy method or, or so, some of the things that he was using to so get girls involved? What in, is the uh, lover boy method? Let's unpack the lover boy method. It's yeah, I, I think... Ben has a, a couple of good points. The problem with what Ben is saying is that that's what Andrew Tate used to be. Yeah. Right? The the man that Andrew Tate is now since he converted to Islam and now he has his, his yeah. own faith is the prescriptions are have changed yeah. from the diagnoses in the past. Yeah. yeah. This came out six days ago. So this yeah. is very new content for yeah. him. And I, even though the Candace Owens interview that we did with yeah. Andrew Tate shows that Andrew Tate is possibly is coming around to wanting marriage. Yeah. I mean, Ben Shapiro's prescription of just get married and have a family and everything will be okay. Like that might have worked back in the sixties, but that doesn't work today, Ben, because not all women, in fact, a small amount of women are worth marrying. So like the whole idea of becoming a high valued man, now granted, I don't, subscribe to the idea of like a high value man's reward is as much sex as he wants. Like the true reward of being a high value man is having as much selection as you need to find that girl that's worth marrying. Like the prescription is entirely different now. It's not as simple as pursue a girl for freaking years on end and wear her down and now who's a stalker. Until she finally says yes, that's not the way to go about it anymore. Well, wear her down, but you can still pursue. It's just that difference kind of thing. But I think he's referring to the healthiest way for people to go on in life and their the, nu the nuclear, the nuclear family. nuclear family. He's talking about that. I do agree with you that because women are throwing themselves around now, it's harder for men to find yeah. them when they want to settle down with. But I also want to say yeah. that it is it is men have a role to play in this 100%. because men oh, yeah. in and of themselves and we all i think we can all agree that we unequivocally believe that a man should pursue one woman and get married to one woman without having a high body count without going out and being sexually promiscuous yeah. because that is not the reward 
of being disciplined in every other area, which the yeah. Red Pill Society talks about. Yeah. You have to be disciplined in every area. And I think that's what Ben's alluding to. He just, I can tell that he hasn't really kept up as much as he should on Andrew Tate yeah. because he's giving a prescription based off of the Andrew Tate that used to be three years ago or 10 years ago. Our old life is done. When he had his webcam business. But now I think Patrick, I'd love, I'm interested to see what he well, says. I also don't think he's kept up with like how difficult it is to be in the dating scene anymore. Well, him he and his wife were both virgins when they got Yeah, married. like he doesn't know what it's like to, to be a man today trying to find a girl because he doesn't have to deal with that. Yeah, I think he's referring mostly to re like religious people because he's very religious. The more religious yeah. you are, the easier it is to find someone that's kept the virtues and that. And yeah, but even that. then, even in the church today, it's not it's not easy. I mean, dude, how many... How many girls do we know from the church scene that like secretly throw themselves around behind the scenes? Yeah, it's just hard because I think it's not always the girl's fault though. It, it's it's a unequivocally ba a balanced approach because with men in the church, you have to be very careful about just because someone says they're a Christian doesn't mean that they're not promiscuous. Yeah, it has to be. What is their values? Are they virtuous? Do they do they view themselves as valuable? And do they act outwardly? practice those disciplines that are required to be someone that you would want to marry. And I think it goes with men too. Men have to be that because you can't expect a woman to do something that you're not willing to do yourself because that would be hypocritical. Well, I, uh, the last thing I'll say before we continue, because I know we've talked a lot and I know you guys want to watch the interview. Uh, the problem with the dating scene in, in church, I'll say, because I've seen this among many people is that if a guy asks a girl out for coffee, the girl sees it as, oh, now he wants to date me. Yeah, he's There has ass. to be this open thing of, hey, let's just go out, get to know each other. But a lot of the people coming up in the church see it as, oh, I want one guy only to pursue me. And, oh, I'm not too interested in this guy yet, but they don't give the guy a chance. I've let you do all of the heavy lifting so far. Now it's my turn. Because they see it as, oh, it's becoming, oh, now we're dating. No, just go out for some coffee. Yes, it might be a date, but it's an informal date to get to know each other. It's a pendulum. So, yeah. It's using persuasive lines to get a girl to fall in love with you. The lover Is boy. that the lover boy method? If that's the lover boy method, 90% of men who are 18 years old, 20 years old, who have no clue how to get a girl, would love to learn that language. <laughs> it's not an easy language to pick up. It's not for everybody. For example... A lot of people watch you. How many people can be a Ben Shapiro? How many viral videos do you have? How many videos have gone? Ben Shapiro destroys, just add whatever the word is next, 10 million views, 50, that's all you gotta put and just let it rip and you'll go, right? How many people can be, can be like Ben? Why do people watch you? Why are people so enamored by you? Because they wish they can kind of be like a Ben. They wish they can kind of talk like a Ben. They wish they can kind of, you know, the guy putting his hand on your shoulder, you put him in his place and, you know, you would pierce, you know, years ago, I don't know what that was, 10, 11 years ago, boom, you put, yeah. you know, hit him in his place. They, you, you went with uh, so many different examples. So take a Ben, I know this is a different example, weird example to give you. You and Andrew Tate are actually very similar, okay? The only <laughs> difference is, he doesn't like that. you know, your wordsmith is with values and principles, conservative belief, and you were raised in an environment where a mom and a dad, you know, were, or your, I think your dad was a composer, your mom, you know, these are people that are executive, you know, in Hollywood or production company she's working at. You had a little bit more stability. He did not have stability. Both of you know how to communicate. Both of you know how to sell your message. Both of you are witty. Both of you know how to challenge the status quo. Both of you know how to push the envelope. Both of you know how to get under someone's skin. Both of you know how to push back on authority because they're telling you what you're doing. You better do it this way or else both of you are somewhat anti-establishment. Uh, so I don't think there's a difference between the two of you. The only difference is your upbringing, mom and dad, environment. Uh, as a man, when you're younger, you know, and you have a woman that publicly humiliates you or breaks your heart or leaves you for another man or, you know, does something to you that's embarrassing, men react to that in a different way. Yes. Some men react to that and they're just mm -hmm. kind of like, I'm going to turn it on the girls. And for every girl I ever date, I'm going to treat them and get back to them. Really, you're not really get back to her. He, she didn't do anything to you give, getting back to your ex because she hurt you, right? Some guys are like, well, maybe I'm not good enough and I'm never going to get a girl and I'm just not going to date and I'm just going to stay single. Another one's going to settle. Everyone reacts in a different way. His react, I've asked him this question many times. I said, so who broke your heart? And he'll kind of go through it, won't give a lot of details about mm -hmm. it. But, you know, if somebody broke uh, uh, his heart, I... I'm assuming the way he took it is 
I'm going to get back to you for the rest of your life, and I'm going to show you how big I'm going to be, how successful I'm going to be, and all these exes who hurt me for the rest of their lives are going to go through this. That's what I think he did. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Lifestyle-wise, the way he makes money, I think there's a lot of different ways to make money. Uh, uh, you know, some you agree with, some you don't agree with. In his environment where he is, uh, that is a normal, that is not an abnormal way of making money. It's not the traditional way of making money, but there's many camera, you know, girls that you do that with and you make, there's a lot of guys that do that in that country. That, there's a reason why he's in Romania. And then the last thing I would add to you is the first time I interviewed with him, when the interview was done, I uh, uh, walked away and when we, back, we went back to the hotel, I met him and I met Tristan. I went back to the hotel and I said, I think, and I, I think I even asked him on the first question, I said, I, said I, think, I think someone in the Muslim faith is influencing you. Mm. Because the language he's talking about, he's talking about the language that I remember living in Iran, where that was the language, where it's men here, women here, you better or else. And it's not maybe you better or else, it's my job is to protect you. Your job is to have kids, and that's it. That's the relationship we have. Um, and, and that's where I felt the influence was taking place, where he went from being the guy that was the fighter, then a lot of women, then he's trying to see what he's going to be doing, then he found a way to make his money, then he's getting all this fame with the camera, he's, he's, got, he's got a way of speaking, and then he's like, okay, there's a lot of chaos going on in my life, I better settle down, I no longer want to play like I did at 25 or 30, I got to get my act together. I want to have this. I want to have that. And he kind of tried to figure out a way to settle down by converting to Islam and Muslim. He's such a good communicator. I, I aspire to yeah. be like Patrick Bay David in the way he communicates because he gave some of the history of uh, Andrew Tate. And he, I love the part where he says to Shapiro, you and Andrew Tate are more like than she you think. And, uh, ben Shapiro's face. He's like, uh, I'm curious if he's going to respond to that because I have But seen I do want to hear from you, uh, Jordan, because I know he talked about exes breaking your heart or mm -hmm. you know, different things that, that caused you to uh, be a little bit more pursuant of, of greatness as a result of trying to get back at them. Was that your part of your journey? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, two, of, two of the scenarios he described was me. I would say for a large amount of my exes, it was like, maybe I'm not good enough. Like, you know, it was always like a self-conscious type of thing. And then the last girl before Hannah was, it was very much a pissed off. Like I'm done with this. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of like being, games. yeah, I'm sick of the games. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Like I'm going to be so freaking awesome that like girls just can't play games with me anymore. I don't know what game y'all trying to run. I don't know what this is. <laughs> But it ain't going down like this. Yeah. Wow. But however, like the aftermath of that, of like getting back at every other girl after that as a way of revenge to the previous, like I don't really do that with her. It's just a, it was just a change of mindset. It was, it was just a, recon, recogni, a recognition that like I wasn't being the leader I was supposed to be. Mm in any of my previous relationships and that going forward, I was going to be the leader. I saw I saw a short recently of Tristan Tate and the whole short was focused around the idea of, of how to prove a girl wrong. And so he said, if a girl dumps you or is unfaithful to you, whatever, walk away. Don't try to fight and get her back. Walk away, become incredibly successful. And then after six years, make her regret leaving you. Mm -hmm. It was all focused around not just becoming the best man you can be for yourself. It was out of spite to prove to them that they should have stayed with you this entire time. And that's kind of what he's talking about with Andrew Tate is that Andrew Tate has been hurt in a way that Ben Shapiro hasn't. My journey has been more along the lines of Ben Shapiro. You know, I've only yeah. been with one girl my entire life. I met her when we were 16, got married at 22, married for almost 10 years. So I have more of Shapiro's life in that way. But for people like you that have been hurt by girls and now you're like, okay, I want to become better. I want to, and you didn't necessarily do it out of spite, but I agree with what he's saying. And a lot of Andrew's energy and wanting to go out there and do things was to prove girls wrong that they should have stayed with him when they left. Yeah. I mean, to a degree, like that's not, that's not entirely wrong either. Like, it's, yeah, it, it, it is, it is deep down fueled by spite. Like there's something about it. Like it's not like a, 
a spite as if like I'm gonna search you out later just to prove how wrong you were. Tristan like, said that, but I don't think Andrew. Yeah, does, yeah, it's almost like an internal level of of spite and and hatred for the game itself that you just want to beat the game. You want women to net to to flock towards you because if a woman said no to you, then that embarrassment as a man of oh I wasn't good enough. And again, I'm just hypothesizing that I wasn't good enough. Oh, now I want women fighting for me because I want them to compete with each other to know that once they have got me, that they have the best. I, I think feel, it's, but it's also radical ownership too, because yeah. Yeah. it's not just, you can't just blame the girl for everything of all oh, she rejected me. So it's all her fault. I think as men, even what Tate's message is, is taking radical accountability for your own life. Yeah. And if, if that girl wasn't good enough or thinks that you weren't good enough, is taking a look inwards and saying, what was I doing to not be the man that she would want? Even if she was very toxic That's or a good, very, a very bad person, yeah. you know, it, it, as men, it falls on us yeah. as a strong man. You have to know that at the end of the day, it falls on you when you're at your home by yourself, drinking yourself to sleep, that girl didn't do it. Yeah, you decided to make that decision to to wallow in self hate and vengeance and greed. There's a different response that we have on this channel. Yeah, right. The response has to be different, and I think that's what a lot of people on YouTube are not understanding. With the red pill, is the response is more important than the actual initial encounter. Because if as men we have to stand up and say no, there's a better way. Yeah, the response is I can forgive, I can let go. And I can become better as a result of it. Not, I'm going to live in hate and greed and fear. I'm going to be a better man because I want to be a better man for me. Not for her. Not for all these women that wish they had me in the future. If I become a good man, that is in and of itself is I will feel proud of myself. Well, it comes back to our first podcast, right? With our first podcast, we said... We are tired of men complaining about the women out there yes. without becoming the man she deserves. Yes. If you become the man she deserves and then, you know, you have more, I don't like it when men complain all, all the time about the women out there, but you have kind of more right to, because if you're becoming a strong man and you're becoming the best version of yourself, then, you know, you have, you have kind of more of a voice, but if you're just sitting down and just allowing yourself to be overcome by depression, sitting on your couch and not going out there and making a difference in the world, then you have to look inside. Yes. What am I doing yeah, wrong as exactly. a man? Why can I not attract radical ownership, radical ownership? Yeah. See the, the spite that I was talking about, that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. Like it's, it wasn't a spite towards her. It was a spite of like, well, crap, I've grown up and society keeps telling me I need to be nice. I need to be this. I need to be yep. that. And like, no matter how many times I try, yeah, it's just not working. Like competing voices. It's, it's almost like a, a, a spite towards, towards the system. And it, 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 it encouraged me to, to learn like the sciences behind like what it actually is women are attracted to. And it kind of goes into uh, like, I hate to drag this on for so long, but it's like, the whole analogy that that fresh and fit like to use in terms of the candy store it's like imagine there's a candy store that women are allowed to go into at 18 with no requisites at all required to to get in they can just get in at the moment they turn 18 but men need to have x amount of money and they need to be this fit and so on and so forth in order to get in and they're more than likely not going to get in until they're 30 40 years old it's like you can either wait outside the candy store and just choose to never fulfill those roles and maybe hope to get a piece of candy that falls out of the girl's pockets when they leave the candy store, or you can go and become the man you need to be to enter the candy store. But like, my thing is, is like, once you get to that point as a man, you're fit, you're, you're, you're attractive, you're, you're successful, you've got a good mindset. You're a leader in your own mind and like you practice that in the real world. You should be able to discern that candy's not good for you. You know, you should you should be able to recognize like, okay, I've become the man that women want and women are attracted to. Now I need to weed through all the candy and find like the the filet mignon. <laughs> the filet mignon. Yeah, you need to you need to use that power of having all the women attracted to you to find the best one for you. The final thing I'll say is men need to lead by example. We have to be the people that are leading the charge, leading by example, being strong men, being men of moral 
integrity and that throughout your life you are building to that point of being the man that she deserves mm -hmm. through your late teens through your 20s through your 30s so many men think they can waste half of their life and now they're going to be a man of that is that a strong quality woman desires yeah that's not always the case but this was a fascinating interview just to hear a little bit about how he goes about his thinking and his opinion of tate but kind of giving you a full rounded view i like how patrick D B david doesn't you know condone Tate. He doesn't worship him. He just gives just a his well-rounded opinion of him. It's fascinating. That's what he does on his podcast all the time is he brings people politically from the left and from the right. And he sits in the middle and says, I'm fascinated by this person. I want to get to know them as an individual. And I think that's what he did with Tate. That's why the interview blew up. There's so much information we can take away from this man because he is a staple of what a healthy, strong man is. And he has the same faith as us as well. Yeah. A very strong Christian, has very strong moral ethics and, and background, a big family man, amazing father. And so we want to aspire on this channel to be like men like this that actually have that, yeah. that sense of moral character. Well, we, we appreciate you guys watching. Patrick but David is one of our heroes. We love how he communicates, how he thinks big picture and dissects little things. And obviously most of you heard of Shapiro. So we'll see you guys in the next video. You can check out more videos here and here. And it's been a good time. Peace. 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 Peace.